Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a soil moisture sensor using the microbit and a soil moisture sensor by SparkFun. When the soil moisture sensor is, um, when it, whenever it's on, the, it's going to be taking soil moisture readings and displaying a logo of your choice to represent how wet or dry it is. So right now in the air, it's very dry, and I'll. Um, mimic a wet soil just by putting my hands on it and somewhere in between um, there'll be a middle moisture sensor reading I think we can see it there it's a I've tried to make a pot logo and it would like a pot plant water filled or empty and we've also added another feature where if you press button a it will give you a number reading that represents the moisture of the sensor um, between approximately 0 and 100. So let's take a look at the code. So as we open up make code, we're going to have a forever and an on start block. We're just going to get rid of the on start and we're not because we're not going to use it and we'll come back to the forever later. So I'm just, just going to drag it out of the way. First of all, we're going to get the on button A pressed. So we're going to build in the feature where when button A is pressed, it will um, it will display the number. And just a word, quick word about how this is assembled. The SparkFun sensor that we recommend in the tutorial has terminal block attachments, and we just used alligator clips with um, the pins in the terminal blocks tightened in with a screw, so no soldering required. And um, the ground line, as indicated on the sensor, um, uh, will go to ground on the micro bit. The VCC is power, it will go to 3 volts, and the signal will go to pin 0. So to start out with this code, first of all, we want to um, we want to take a reading. So if we take a look at our completed code here, um, we're going to set moisture reading to be analog pin 0. So the first thing we're going to do is take a um, moisture reading. So you'll, we'll need to make a variable. So um, first off, hit make a variable and name it moisture reading. Um, I've already created one here. And once you've created one, you'll get these block options. So I'm going to set moisture reading to the advanced pin um, analog read pin 0, and this reads the data coming in from the external sensor. And then under basic, there'll be a show number. We're going to set it to the variable that we just saved, moisture reading. And then afterwards, we'll clear the screen. So under basic and more, and then clear screen. And this is the, the, the simplest form of this code is that um, when button A is pressed, it'll take a reading and display it on the screen. But this will this will return a really wide range of readings between um, like 1 and 1024. And it's kind of hard to imagine those readings as something tangible. So what we want to do is we want to bring it down to just be between 0 and 100, which is a little easier to understand. So we're going to use math and use the map tool. So well, I'm going to remove the analog read pin 0 and replace this map in our, in our variable set block. And then put analog read in the first field. So we're going to map the reading from analog read from 0 to 1023 and make it be, front be between 0 and 100. So what that means is we know the reading's going to be between 0 and 1023, but we want, to, um, we want it to appear as being between 0 and 100. So this block um, shifts all those numbers to be in their relative, their, um, relative position between 0 and 100. So 0 is still 0, 1,000 will become 100, 500 and, um, 512 will become 50. Um, but we want one of the disadvantages to um, 
not calibrating a sensor every time. Um, this will be this will be using an uncalibrated sensor for this project. Is that we don't know what the true high value reading is because it's different a little bit from sensor to sensor and it changes based on whether you're using five volts to power the sensor or three volts like the micro bit. But I know from experience that the high reading from this sensor powered off the micro bit is going to be about 750. So I'm going to just set it to 750. And you can um, test this by putting your sensor in water um, once the code's done and hitting the button and seeing what the reading is, the raw reading is, and then set your code to match. So now we're going to, this will be remapping the moisture reading from 0 to 100. And then we just want to use the round bubble, put it in place of the show number, and then put moisture reading inside it. So this will make the moisture reading a nice round number because as we're shifting numbers from the range of 0 to 750 to be 0 and 100, it'll give us a lot of decimal places and we don't need that. So there we have it. That's um, section 1 is button A pressed to give you a number reading displayed on the micro bit. And the second half is a is a, we're going to make an image that always appears on the face of the micro bit that um, represents how wet the soil is. So if you want something that's always in the soil that you can that you can um, just glance over and look at without needing to push a button to take a number reading. So again, we're going to use the variable set the moisture reading variable to um, and we're going to do it in order this time to map analog read from low 0 to high 750 again. But this time we wanted to map it to be between 0 and 3. Because we're only going to make three, lo three symbols, this just makes it easy to sort the program later on. And then we're going to use some logic. So we'll go into an if true um, then else block. So and then we're going to grab the conditional. So if moisture reading is, um, if the moisture reading is less than one, then it's going to be really dry. So we're going to get a show LEDs from the basic block. And I'm just going to make my, um, my pot plat plant is empty logo here. So. Um, that would be our dry reading. And then we're going to hit this plus down on the if to give us more fields. So we'll get another comparison in here. Uh, we'll hold off on that. We're going to need an and block because this next one will need two conditions. So we'll put an and in there. So this needs two things to be true in order for this whole section to be true. And we'll grab the comparison again. We'll grab the comparison again. So if moisture reading is um, we'll say that if it's greater than or equal to one and we'll grab another comparison if moisture reading is um, less than two then we're going to be middle level moisture that'll be middle of the range so I'll grab another showy LEDs block and I'll make my my pot plant that's half filled with water. And then the only other condition, since we only have three options, the range is going to be one, two, or three, the only other option will be that it's completely wet. Because so if we're not returning a value that's dry, we're not con uh, returning a value that, that's in the middle, we must be returning a value that's wet. So um, we don't need to make another condition for this. We can just say else um, else the plant is completely wet and full. So that's our next section of the code. This will display our readings constantly in a graphic format on the LED screen. So I'm just going to download it to the device. As we can see, I've got an empty pot plant. The sensor's in the air. My sort of wet fingers will will make the pot plant appear full and if it's on maybe a drier part of my skin then maybe it would be in somewhere in the middle 
it kind of shifts around. Your hand's not really the best um, way to measure moisture with a moisture sensor, but you know, it'll uh, it allows you to test to see if your program's working a little bit. All right, so that's our soil moisture sensor. All you got to do now is get a battery and carry it around and stick it in the soil and take some readings. If you want to learn more about the microbit, we've got a lot of other microbit tutorials out there on the website. We're making new ones every day, so check back in and hopefully we'll see you there.